Despite numerous news articles, political pundits, and calls for Biden to end his reelection campaign, a new Northeastern University study finds that the president's June 27th debate performance has had almost no impact on voters' preferences. 94% of those surveyed who had said before the debate that they were Biden supporters said they will continue to support the president. But just 86% of those who indicated support for Trump before the debate said they would continue to do so. Now, if you listen to that and then listen to all the rhetoric afterwards, you go, what the hell is going on? L. Joy Williams, of course, a longtime uh, activist, strategist, uh, also a serious XM radio show host, joins us right now. And L. Joy, just what do you make of the insanity that you're seeing among Democrats trying to get Joe Biden out of the race? No plan B. Nothing about Vice President Kamala Harris. And they are creating dissension in July when the election is less than 120 days away. It's, it's absolutely reprehensible uh, to watch this unfold because this is an issue of uh, media making. Right. Is that it's something for pundits and, you know, cable news talking heads to continue the conversation on instead of paying attention to the political landscape and what is happening around us, who is on the opposite side. And instead of focusing on that, they need um, something else to drum up uh, viewership. Right. Because if we can keep a speculation that there may be some drama at the convention, then that means more people will be tuned in and will watch our channels to see if there's drama at the convention. Uh, our ad sales and all of that stuff will go up. That that literally is what I believe this is all about, because it's not as if there's some huge mass of voters uh, or of Democrats calling for Biden to step aside. Out of the 200 or something, um, the 300, both from the, uh, uh, the House, the Senate, and other leadership, I think with the last count was like nine or 10, <laughs> right? And some of who are not even a, in a position um, on a federal level to make that decision. And so at this point, I believe that Biden is doing the right thing, which is I ran for the American people and I'm going to continue to hear from and uh, speak to the American people. And as you pointed out, you know, none of this is swaying people from supporting him. And, you know, the question I really have, besides they have no plan B and skipping over the vice president, is if we were actually in the streets doing the work that we need to be doing in order to win, then I would have maybe a little bit more sympathetic ear to people who are bringing up this concern. But we're not. Those donors that have the concern, are how much are you investing in supporting the organizations that need that money now so that they can continue to be on the doors and on the phones and engaging people. That is the work that we need to do to win. And all of this conversation and talk and releasing statements and letters and everything, having serious concerns, take your serious concerns and get out in the street and actually do some work. Uh, Christopher Boozy, uh, Eljoy made a point there about infrastructure. Let's be clear. Right now, Biden Harris has about a thousand staffers, a hundred field offices. If it's if Joe Biden drops out and you don't pick Vice President Kamala Harris, you can't transfer those assets to other other candidate. You can't transfer the money. So you have an infrastructure problem if you don't go with Vice President Harris. I don't understand how these people don't realize that. Once again, it's insanity. Um, you, legally, you can't transfer the money because that money is for the, the Biden-Harris ticket. So legally, they can't. Um, and as you pointed out, the infrastructure on the ground, if you replace both and you try to plop two new people in there, it's, it's, it's virtually impossible um, to be able to then set up a ground game and be competitive in November. And, and, and let's not forget 
who, who I, I don't know who this magic person or persons will be, but um, they're going to have to then introduce themselves to the American uh, public. And just because someone may be popular in their state does not mean they're going to be popular nationally. I mean, we saw that with Ron DeSantis. You know, he was supposed to be the person to take on Trump, and that fizzled out pretty quickly. So, you know, I, 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 I really honestly don't understand what these folks think they're going to be able to do in terms of pulling Biden out and putting somebody in. It doesn't work that way. And, and one other thing, uh, Roland, that's, uh, you know, that's been driving me also crazy about this, this whole thing. Let's, let's, let's pretend we could do this, right? Let's pretend that we could take, you know, whoever and put them, you know, and replace Biden and Harris. How are they going to get, you know, that person or that ticket on every ballot? It's not going to happen. It's it's almost it's basically too late, and we talked about that, you know, a bit earlier. But there will be legal changes, and more than likely, more than likely, that candidate will not be on every ballot. Um, L. Joy, here's something else that I'm just sitting here like. I saw this story the other day. Uh, here we go to my iPad. Um, you got New York Democrats, your state. Oh, 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 my God, we might lose New York. What the hell? These blue states, are you trying to tell me that all of a sudden Donald Trump is going to win Minnesota? He's going to win New York State. He's going to win Illinois. I and if, the, and if he does, it is because of a failure of leadership and work. The reason why we lost a congressional street, a congressional seat, is a lack in the failure of the governor at that time to really invest in redistricting efforts. Um, in order to do that, that resulted into us not counting enough people in order to keep our seats. Then fast forward, when we do get to the uh, midterm election, it was the lack of investment in a coordinated strategy to protect and expand the congressional districts to make sure we retained what we had. So again, it is not because of one individual man at the top of the ticket. It is because of a lack of work. And that's what is really bothering me so much about this as they are asking one man to step aside as if he is the only one that has to do the work in order to win in November. And that's not the case. If you're talking about uh, winning to protect democracy, that is not an effort for one man. That is an effort for all of us to come together and do our respective part. Um, and so Biden is doing his part right? And carrying the, the banner. Harris is doing her part and carrying the banner for the party. And we need everybody else to do their part. And if you are a donor, invest now in the in the resources that people need in order to continue the work. If you're a talking head, you need to invest in talking up what we are voting for, not just what we are voting against. If you're an individual activist, you need to make sure that you are working within your sphere of influence to make sure that people understand the misinformation and the disinformation that's being sowed, that people understand what's at stake, and to understand what we will be able to do with a second term of a Biden-Harris administration. There's still voting rights on the line. There's still um, uh, uh, gut, uh, issues related to gun violence on the line. We were, are going to be able to do much more if we have a president like Biden and um, also by President Harris in the White House. We are able to do more when we are in control of Congress. And that is what people should be focused on, not one 90-minute debate. Lauren, on that point there, I mean, you're seeing these blue slot. You take New Hampshire, okay? So the folks in New Hampshire are still caught in their feelings because the primary was changed. Uh, well, I'm sorry, you don't have the right to be first in the nation and say screw everybody else. Yeah. And so it, this is the this is the the childishness that we're seeing in the country right now. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, how you doing, El Joy? 
Uh, I'm from New York. Um, I was born in the Bronx. <laughs> There's no way that the Republicans are going to win New York. <laughs> That's not going to happen. It just shows you the mania that L. Joy already pointed out in the media on this topic. Uh, there's just a lot of strange things going on. I think certainly the, the media is in a is in a failed business model. As you had mentioned before, Roland, they want Donald Trump in there to make money. I don't care what anyone wants. I'll never be able to prove it, but everything that they do is to get him into office to have to drive excitement, to drive traffic to these websites, and to drive attention. And I just... I cannot believe that it's just an amazing coincidence that they just happen to be doing everything uh, under the sun, and particularly the New York Times and uh, CNN, to uh, to drive excitement and controversy. And it just happens to all go in the direction of their bottom line in terms of web traffic. So, um, you know, it's it's weird. It's a situ- it's a difficult situation, I think, for everybody, as we know, because in fact. It may, in fact, be true that the president does have a cognitive issue that does need to be dealt with and should be discussed. It could be true that the White House, that the senior staff of the White House, was hiding that for a good amount of time. Those things do need to be confronted. But at the same time, what we know is that uh, there is only one person who's beaten Donald Trump, and that is Joe Biden. Uh, there has never been a brokered convention in the history of American politics that has led to a win for that party. And the last two times that this happened, where the incumbent president left, which of course was Truman and LBJ, that led to a Republican coming in, uh, Dwight Eisenhower and Richard Nixon. There is no history for this succeeding. So this is a, this is an interesting moment for the Democratic Party, and I do think it reflects an inability to turn the page to the next generation, and that next generation is extremely diverse and in a lot of cases extremely black. We'll see what happens. Uh, oh, Joy, here's also where I am um, a little confused when, 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 again, looking at all of this. So you've got folks saying, oh, in these swing districts, he's dragging people down. Um, and, and, oh, in, in, in the New York suburban districts, isn't it the job of the congressional candidate to be making the case to their voters This is why I say this is people being lazy. This is people (laughs) wanting to rely just on the top of the ticket in order to drive turnout. And those of us who actually do elections, who actually work in the streets, who actually do campaign, I think Simone Sanders said that before, it's not just the to the ticket that drives people to turn out. And in fact, I, I think I talked about this in some of the, the, the tweets I highlighted. Um, you know, the other side, Trump has a ceiling. Right? There is only so many people that the Republicans can persuade. Um, they have their base, and there's only a small amount of persuadable voters that they can persuade. While we, our ceiling is high, all we have to do is go out and engage with people um, and talk to them about not only what's at stake, but what we can do. It's important that that, at that next piece is added, because we can't just do the fear of, you know, Project 2025, which is important and it should be part of our, you know, messaging. But we also have to talk about what we can do. And our ceiling is much higher. We're able to persuade so many more, not only to vote for um, the ticket, but also to turn out in general. And for a lot of these races that you are mentioning um, in swing states and um, swing districts, it's that that two, three percent of people who are infrequent voters, that's all we need to do. And so we have too much work to do for us to be, I, I don't want to be, Roland, as much as I love being on your show, I don't want to be on here talking about this. I want to be talking about how do we, how are we engaging people? What are the, What is the messaging that is working to turn out those in that 25 to 45 um, band? What is working to engage young people? What That's what I want to be talking about right now. I don't want to be talking about this. For this news conference, President Joe Biden, it was originally scheduled for 530, was pushed back to 630. It's almost 730 and still hasn't started yet. Uh, Greg Carr, uh, I want to go to you because as I'm looking at, again, this whole landscape, I always talk about I hate process journalism. Mm -hmm. And if you're Democrats 
and you're not talking about great economic numbers. You're not talking about inflation going down. You're not talking about the fact that President Biden in another month will have, will, under his term, will have created more jobs than Reagan did in eight years. So you got Democrats who keep going on television, targeting him and not telling a great story. Democrats can't blame that on anybody else but themselves. Fan base exclusive audio rooms are here. Now tap, talk, and get paid. Monetize your live podcast and most engaging conversations. You can now create exclusive audio chat rooms only for your subscribers and biggest fans. And as a user, subscribe, listen, and talk to your favorite creators. Now tap, talk, and get paid. Because everyone's a fan of something, and everyone has a fan base. And if you don't know...